Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, I'm super excited for today's show. It's been one that I've been planning and working on for months and months and months. So the middle of last year, I acquired my first Edison Diamond Disc record. And you may be saying, what's a Diamond Disc record? Is this an old 78? Not exactly. So for size comparison, this is a 10 inch disc. Uh, there's a 45, a 7 inch 45, so you can see comparatively how the diameter is different. So the Edison Diamond Discs were very, very interesting. We're going to take a look at a few and we're going to attempt to listen to one. So Thomas Edison, famous for his wax cylinder phonographs, eventually ventured into the disc phonograph record market. These came out in approximately 1912 and lasted until about 1929 when they fell out of fashion and they were designed to compete with the the Victor record, the you know what we know as a 78 today. So what makes this different? So a couple of things that make this different. First, check out how thick this record is. Very thick record. And again, just for comparison's sake, regular record, you can see, in fact, let me just take it out. We're talking thick, like quarter of an inch thick. Why is it that thick? Well, they are especially resistive to um, warpage, which is a good thing, but that's only a side effect because these records are vertically cut. That means that the groove, instead of being a continuous depth and the needle moving left to right, the groove depth changes and the needle goes up and down, not left to right. Up and down, up and down, up and down. It's called a hill and dale groove. The groove can be narrower. Therefore, you can fit more information onto a record. So like a 10 inch 78 is gonna hold about three, three and a half minutes of music, depending on how it's modulated where you can get a full extra minute out of a diamond disc on average. So Edison comes out with his own disc records to compete with a Victor 78 or shellac record. And these are interesting because they're not made of shellac. It's actually a wood flower core, if you can believe that. Let's see if we can look inside there. Wood flower core. Some of the later ones were actually clay. And then it's coated in a resin. So it's a different material. It's a little bit more susceptible to scratching than shellac is so you can't put this like on our vita nola phonograph we can't just put this on there with a steel needle tear it up so we're going to use a very interesting playback method to achieve playing this back now my phonograph actually allows you to rotate the reproducer to play back vertically cut records unfortunately all i have are steel needles which it's a big no-no when it comes to these types of records. And you can't use steel needles. You have to use a sapphire ball needle, basically like a ballpoint pen that'll just roll through that groove. Kind of pricey, I haven't picked one up yet. However, there is an alternate way to play a diamond disc. I'll show you a couple of my other ones. This one picked up uh, two of these. I actually haven't even opened them. These are Five bucks a piece I paid for these, which is a fantastic deal on diamond discs. These typically command prices a bit higher than a regular 78. I wouldn't go so far as to say they're extremely rare, but they're definitely not something you're gonna find at your neighborhood thrift store in all likelihood. This is kind of referred to as the hologram label. They have the uh, paper labels that have the um, sort of a strobe marking. And I'm not 100% sure if that's a literal strobe marking, by the way, these rotate at 80 RPMs. Edison was the first one to standardize rotation speed because back in those days, 70 or uh, shellac records, or as they knew them, records, because that's all they had to compare it to, um, rotated anywhere from 76 RPM, 78 RPM, 90 RPM. Some Path A discs were you know, up to 120 RPM. So Edison was the first uh, one to say, you know, we should standardize this. So these all rotate at 80 RPM. As you can see, this is pretty well scratched up. Look at that. I mean, we're talking Thomas Edison, you guys. The resin coating on this is 
chemically identical to Bakelite. So it's essentially an early plastic. So really, really, really cool. Now the Edison records, they were their own record labels. So they had their own artists, all that good stuff. This is a two-sided label. A lot of these ones that have this kind of sort of hologram-ish effect are single-sided labels. So let me pull another one out of its packaging to show you guys. I want to be very careful, obviously, with these. I mean, talk about record archaeology. These are just fantastic representations. Oops. I keep thinking that's upside down. I don't know why. Kind of hard to show, but look at that. Isn't that a, it does look like a hologram of Thomas Edison. Absolutely amazing with his signature on there. Really, really neat. Matrix. I'm not sure if these were pressed, or they had to have been pressed, but I'm not sure exactly what the manufacturing, this is another two-sided one, what the manufacturing process is on these. There's no left to right movement in those tracks. It's only up and down. So let me show you one more thing, by the way, before we start talking about playing these. I want to take care to uh, make sure these are in good condition. No scratch on that one. This is a De uh, Edison diamond disc that was made in the last, let's see, when was this made? I can tell you. This one was made in on July 8th of 2020. What? An Edison diamond disc on colored vinyl. Well, not really vinyl. It's a resin. This is a casting. This is a reproduction Edison diamond disc. You guys already know who made this, right? <laughs> this is by far to mark, a.k.a. Peter Landry. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to try this out. He has the ability, the equipment, and the intelligence, know-how to reproduce Edison diamond discs, and I think that is cool. I think that is really cool. He's even got the thickness down. Look at that. So we're going to take a listen to this as well. I haven't listened to any of these whatsoever. So that's the next thing that we need to talk about, listening to these. So like I said, you have to use a diamond or a uh, sapphire ball stylus to listen to them on a, uh, a phonograph. They also made Edison diamond disc phonographs where the reproducers were facing down. They were parallel to the surface. But uh, later on, you know, third party units like my Vita Nola had the ability to do both. But like I said, I don't have that sapphire ball stylus. So what can you do? Well, it turns out you can, one of the best ways to play these is on a regular old suitcase player with a ceramic cartridge tracking about five grams, which is gonna be loads lighter than an old school reproducer. So it won't do any damage. But the problem is, is we have to wire the cartridge out of phase. Otherwise, it's gonna pick up very, very low sound. So let's do this. Let me clear this workspace out and we'll pull out my suitcase player and we will, now it's better by the way, if you can, uh, a lot of people say the 0.7 mil groove width is better. Cause like I said, these are narrower than a lateral cut. So you don't necessarily want to put a three mil stylus down in this. You want to use the micro groove. That'll actually be better. So let's pull that out and we'll listen to it with it in phase and then we'll wire it out of phase and see what we get. Okay. So like I said, they're 80 RPM. So 78 is as close as we're going to get on this. Uh, if you have a unit with pitch control, you might be able to get it up higher, but it feels kind of weird putting a diamond disc on a suitcase player. I don't know why. But let's go ahead. And again, this has not been rewired, so this cartridge is in phase. And do we have power? Hmm, not yet. Ah, helps if I turn the power supply on. Come to life. Come to life. Please. What on earth? Oh, it's in Bluetooth mode. Okay. There we go. So again, let's uh, listen to what, this is the before. This is what it sounds like before we, we rewire the cartridge. Here it comes. Okay, so that's a lot of noise, but you can hear the sound. I mean, it's not like it's imperceivable. It's just awful quiet. So what we need to do is rewire this cartridge. And 
I've done shows before about, you know, oops, there goes a needle. It's okay. Um, about how to do that. So what I'm going to do is rather than do another video about how to do this, and it's kind of awkward doing it like that on camera, I will do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have wired this out of phase. Actually, it was a lot faster than I thought it would be. Basically, I just swapped the white and red wires on the cartridge. And now, let's try it again. Let's spin up our record. And again, remember last time it just was a lot of background noise with very little sound. So let's see how it's improved. Definitely improved, for sure. Now, the Edison Diamond Disc, one reason why it didn't hang around forever is it wasn't as good. This is, art, this is all subjective, so you could tell me I'm completely off base here. Um, but it was largely thought that this format was not as good sounding as a regular Victrola record. By the way, let's listen to side B a little bit. Look at the material in the middle there. Again, the early ones were wood flower, and the later ones, well, I realize I'm still spinning. The later ones are um, clay. Now, as you can tell, this one's a, the hole has been kind of. That's another thing too. Uh, the holes, the spindles on record players, especially back then, weren't consistent. So this one obviously has a little bigger hole, leading to some of that left to right movement there. Oof! Wow. Look how this area is shaded. I wonder what the sound. Usually shading like that either is damage on a regular record or it is modulation due to like extra loud passages. Let's see what this one is. Oof. Yeah, that's that's rough. Personal opinion, personal opinion. Um, for people that are detractors of these suitcase players, there is consensus amongst many, many people that they are one of the best units for playing 78s or records like this even. Why is that? Well, so we've proved before that it tracks about five to six grams, which I maintain is not a problem for vinyl records. True, it may wear them faster. By the way, I think this one might be clay. The, in, the inner color there is a little different. I maintain is not a problem for vinyl records, um, but you know the original pickups, the uh, reproducers on old old school phonographs were much heavier. I mean, we're talking in some cases ounces, not grams. So you know, five to six grams is a featherweight compared to what they're used to, and they've got seventy. Most every one of them has seventy eight RPM. And if you upgrade the cartridge to, uh, you know, or a, the stylus, put on a flip cartridge or get a stylus that can handle the wider grooves on those ones, the regular 78s, then you've got a winning and affordable way to play 78s. Like I said, this one has a much narrower groove than a 78, so the micro groove is actually ideal. Okay, so now let's play that reproduction. What do you say to that? So let me grab Peter's reproduction and we'll play it. Still kind of noisy, even with the out of phase wiring. Um, if you do this on like an LP120, I have a cartridge. Actually, I can show it to you. In fact, we've done shows about this cartridge. It is one of the best 78 cartridges out there. And I used to have this on my LP120. This is a Ortofon 78 cartridge, mono, with a dedicated um, three mil stylus. The only problem is I snapped my cantilever off. Little bit of a problem there, so I need to replace the needle. Now, just like on these phonographs where the needle is housed in that red plastic, 
on the ortofons it's housed in in this in this case in this gray plastic but we can actually pop this off and i can show you what the cartridge part of it looks like versus the actual needle or stylus so that silver part is the cartridge this is the housing and then this is the needle so this is why i say an ortofon 2m red and blue are actually the same cartridge they just have a different needle the ortofon red is a bonded elliptical meaning that the uh the needle the diamond is attached as a little piece of diamond a chip of diamond attached to a um steel shank whereas the 2m blue is the exact same cartridge with an elliptical nude and the nude styli are just solid diamond so there's no bonded tip there's an actual solid piece of diamond so negligibly better performance identical cartridge that does mean you could buy yourselves a uh, a 2m blue car or 2m red cartridge and just upgrade the stylus and then instantly have a 2m or how did I say that? You know what I mean. Buy the red, upgrade the stylus, get the blue. If you wanted to do that, but there you go. A little sidetrack. All right, let's go ahead and listen to this, and then we'll call it a day. This is Peter, a.k.a. Fartemark's molded copy of an Edison diamond disc. awesome that sounds better than the others that is amazing his copy sounds better than the originals you'll notice this is kitten on the keys this is one of the more popular titles that's why he did it this way so all right guys there you go there is your introduction to edison records edison diamond discs the reason why they called them diamond discs is the red the original edison uh phonographs that played these Instead of using a replaceable steel stylus like a regular, uh, you know, gramophone phonograph, used a permanent diamond stylus. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? So very ahead of the game, as always, Thomas Edison. And uh, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, share this out. with. Would you please do that? If you share this out, that would be a big, big help to me. But most importantly, subscribe. Give me a comment down below. Do you guys have any diamond discs? Is this something you'd be interested in getting into? Antique stores, antique malls is probably your most likely bet uh, in person or online as well. Not terribly expensive. Um, I have, you know, a few, a handful, and, you know, not, you know, I'm not going to go be buying a million of them. They take up a lot of space. Like I said, they're thick. And they're heavy, but they are super, super cool. So anyway, I hope you thought this was interesting. Thank you so much for watching. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.